Howdy Heroes Heart, this is Kyle Ferguson, and I'm sitting down today with Wild Heart Esports Unaverted to talk about a fan favorite, Nazebo. Unaverted. You picked uh, a Nazebo on Tomb of the Spider Queen, the, the uh, if you don't mind me saying so, the Gold League Classic. What, <laughs> what led to this and now uh, is leading us into a outbreak of Nazebo play? Uh... Nazebo's obviously good at 20. Uh, he he also he has some other things that are pretty strong, like Medallion, not interacting with Wall. Uh, there's a there's a few other factors. He has high health pool. Um, you know, there's upsides and downsides to him. He can trade well, but he can't necessarily do some the other things well, but some things he sells in. That's interesting. So the medallion kind of a bright wingy situation there that it just isn't interacting with the zombie wall is that also for things like johanna and dahaka here as well yeah yeah exactly i those heroes if they can kill the zombie wall then that benefits them so there's a lot of times sir joe actually gets caught but then she just clears it but um it, it still has um, some moments where it creates picks, or it's a good follow-up. I think one of the biggest concerns when it comes to Nazebo is that he's slow. It, it's poison damage, the toads take time to reach their destination. Did this comp kind of make up for that with the more standstilliness of the Uther and the Muradin stuns with the Gazlo stun? Or was it just the power of Nazebo on the particular map? Oh, we, we were 100% going to be slow and kind of low on damage until 20 but that was just kind of a given i mean it Murden does somewhat compensate for it in the mid to early but i get um, you you went with yeah, it, thing of the deep at one is mm -hmm. this your normal pick is this the preferred pick or was it situational this particular game um if I'm solo clearing, I think this is the best build. So, we've actually practiced this build a bit. Um, I think QN1's really strong, just by the numbers. Um, and especially since they buffed it, they added two seconds CDR on the, the baseline for QQuest, but uh, thinking of the deep for extra wall range can make a big difference. For those picks that you're currently working on in the first place. And now you picked up a surprise pick, I think, to a lot of us at home, which was the Hex Crawlers, which is more of a team fight talent. Why that one over the double soak priorities of Blood Ritual or even Big Voodoo? Um, I don't think Big Voodoo is the pick almost ever. I, I've messed with it a bit, and I've actually taken out a spreadsheet and done the math on when Q14 or Big Voodoo is better. And early game, it's not even close. Um, early to mid game, you're always going to net more health and mana out of Q14, out of just hitting one Q on an enemy hero. Um, and you just run out of mana if you go Blood Ritual. For the, the other four, or I'm sorry, with Big Booty, you run out of mana. With Blood Ritual, the one that regens whenever you kill a minion, um, it gives you a better early game, but a worse late game. So I figured we would be okay. It, if they have something like um, like a Kerrigan or like an Ariel Vala, like something that's going to be very strong early, I would take Blood Ritual here instead. Okay. So Hex Crawlers is actually the investment throughout the entire game. And yeah. because you're going to hit your spiders, which is probably more the defining aspect of someone over those lower league players. Therefore, your hex crawlers are a greater effectiveness for this particular battle. Mm -hmm. That's a cool way to think of it. I have no doubt that's going to lead to an outbreak of uh, hex crawlers as well. Now you've grabbed up the Toads of Hugeness, which just seems generally good. The siege damage of it. Does that interact with your level one thing of the deep? No. Um, I mean, they, they jump farther, but it doesn't increase the damage because they get four hops either way. Um, again, it this is somewhat more specific for how we play Nazebo compared to 
what does the most damage because if you just look at numbers q q1 4 and 7 is is higher damage but um if you're taking thing of the deep uh your wave clear isn't anything better but you know you have the extra range to where you can wave clear without interaction which is a huge benefit that's like a major reason on why we like picking him and so Taking E on 7 actually lets you clear waves on your own. Wall on 7 lets you do the same thing, but then you lose the safety of having your wall to kill you if you get ganked. In that moment so, right there, you threw a spider jar at Johanna. Was, that's clearly not going to kill Johanna. Was that just purely for mana and, and yeah, goodies along yeah. the way? I, uh, off cooldown throwing um, Q at enemy heroes if they're available. Yep. Oh, okay, so because we're not doing kind of a spider damage build and we're not having to fill that ranged assassin role here, you get to use your level 4 talent as a farming opportunity to keep yourself powered through these moments. Yeah, pretty that, much. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So you mentioned the, the safety of the soaking. Is that... Is that something that informed the Nazebo pick over things like Leoric and Malthiel? Is just that he's not going to die doing it because he has the range? Yeah. It, yeah, you definitely open yourself up more to ganking opportunities if you are playing Leoric or Malthiel in the mid top. Malthiel definitely more than Leo, but. Um, no, it, it's definitely a huge bonus for how safe he is. Um, he doesn't necessarily have an escape, so all the safety just comes from you just cast your abilities from far away, and then ideally you uh, are far enough that they can't ever be in engage range of you. Sure. Now you picked up Ravenous Spirit, which is, again, one of those kind of assassin talents, but now you're helping to fill out maybe that ranged mage role here, or do you have other thoughts with Ravenous Spirit? Um, Ravenous just does more burst damage, so if if I'm trying to follow up on a jump stun or something like that, um, it's going to be faster with the damage, a little bit lo longer range, since you can start out by casting a little bit shorter and then just walk it into whoever just got stunned. I'm noticing but, probably the biggest change I see out of Storm League Nazebos is that you never interact with walls. You get, you get the lane cleared, even if the gems are now out of range. You don't worry about it too much. You just get back to that next lane again. So would, yeah. would Gargantuan not serve a purpose for the way your team plays in the Zebo? Yeah, I, I think that's pretty fair. They, they're definitely happening games so where I pick uh, Garg, but I would say majority of the time, I am just taking Ravenous Spirit, just because it... It usually is better in team fights, unless um, you're worried that it's going to get interrupted. Um, but Ravenous will usually net you more damage. Now here you're using almost your zombie walls like a May uses her Blizzard, but you're you're clogging up the lane, correct? So it's not dealing as much damage to your buildings that the minions can right. lose their their pathing, their tracking. Mm hmm. Yeah. You're right. It, it's multi-purpose. Um, whenever the minions finish killing something, they'll re-aggro, and then I just give it a wall to re-aggro on instead of um, building damage so that we save health. Um, yeah, I mean, any time that you can do that, it's useful. Or if you know that you can cast W just to clear faster, that's also useful. It, w on 7 is more wave clear, it's just not safe. So, And wall baseline does have decent wave clear. Well, and like that zombie wall we just saw, was that an intentional location for it or was it a missed go on Johanna? Oh, I was trying to appeal the back line. Cool. So you, yeah, so that was placed in such a way that it wasn't going to catch anybody. Right. But it cut off Tychus and therefore clogged Brightwing. And now you all have isolated out just the Johanna. So those aren't joining the team fight. Yeah. Mingle here wasn't ever to really kill anyone. It was just to get funds out. I think we failed, but it was close. <laughs> yeah, so even with long range grenade comes in, cleans them up, but uh, yeah. that still completes your primary goal, which is to get to that late game safely. The range yeah. on that is actually pretty darn good for keeping. Now with that more in mind, that Nazebo is playing to survive. 
the ravenous spirit pick makes a lot more sense. I think a lot of us get a little excited maybe about blood ritual, about Nazebo's overall health, and think we can get in the melee assassin a bit. <laughs> so yeah. right here you've got you've got a push going. What is the Nazebo plan? Are you still in more of a farm mode? Are you trying to aid this team fight that's breaking out, or do you want to get those buildings? We're definitely um, looking to interact with enemy heroes. We're both... We're, we're looking at what they're doing. So if, if they step up aggressively to clear, we're going to fight them. If, if they try to passively clear, just use long range abilities just to clear. If they send Joe in, which is DW. Tychus is trying to max range. We'll match them. We'll just interact with buildings and we'll just take our our damage for whatever we get out of the, the wave. So, um, but we have no problem functioning like a normal con. So if this is a junk rat, we're going to do the same things. Has this, uh, is this comp any different because of the low healing of Uther or the huge amount of melee that you're playing? Or would you just be playing Nazebo the same way despite the comp? I definitely trade less with Uther. With all the melee, that is more on them. So it's it's a lot on funds to kind of watch his own health pool and play pretty safe since everyone else kind of has mechanics for them to to stay high health. Gaslow does have some self-healing, but overall my goal is to trade a little bit less and try to make sure that I have a wall up when our engage happens or if I see something. When you say trade, you mean... I, I poke you, you poke me, and whoever comes out on top is, is the winner of the trade. Yes, and I love that play style. So it it always makes me a little sad when we have an Uther, but, you know, that's how it is. <laughs> when, when we pick Uther and I'm playing Nazebo, so Nazebo wins some trades, especially with Q build, um, just because Q on 4 will heal you a lot. You still need to kind of avoid trades. You picked up Ice Block here, but before I get to that, there, there's there's a quick match Nazebo loving me that goes, ooh, Zombie wall on top of the building, doesn't that do a lot of damage? Am I wrong there? No, it does. All of them punch the building. It... But because your focus I... is in other places and, and zoning right. people and help with the team fights, that sort of quick matchery isn't happening. You've got more important jobs to do. Yeah, pretty much. So you got the ice block. Popular pick. Is there any reason <laughs> you'd go with the other two? Um... Not that I can think of. There probably is a scenario where the other two could be picked. The spell armor or the the base armor. I would think superstition would be pickable more often. But I find too many uses for ice block to where I normally wouldn't want to switch it up unless they are, for whatever reason, they have like chromie and someone else just spell damage. Then I, I might take superstition, but... Not get in range of those auto attacks in the first place. Right. And makes sense here, as you mentioned with the Uther, if we're avoiding taking any damage in the first place. I, I do I, I do think so much of this build is dependent right now, or at least your level four, is that you do hit all your spiders, which is surprisingly rare for most of us Nazebo players. I think um, Thing of the Deep makes a big difference on it. it having longer cast range... So originally when I started playing Nazebo, because when I started on this team... Uh, I actually didn't like Nazebo that much, um, but you know, I, I put time into him and I learned him and I, I started to like him more, but I think at first I really didn't like him when I was missing all my keys because he was such short range, <laughs> but that's one of the benefits of Thing in the Deep. Um, but it, you could also just get used to the short range too, that, that's something that I've changed as well. I guess, too, wouldn't there be a travel time speed associated with the range increase? Because it has to get there in the same amount of time, perhaps? I'm not sure. Uh, to be honest with you, I think so. Just because when you melee cast it, it does drop faster. It's not like Brightwing Q, where Brightwing Q always takes the same amount of speed no matter what. Unless you self-cast. But okay. Here you grabbed up Soul Harvest. Which means you're going to start perhaps getting more in the thick of it. Kind of. Um, I just asked my team to save the wave for me whenever I'm about to have it. And I think that's going to be important. 
Okay, right, so, because because your soul harvest works on all enemies. So they hold the lane for you. You get powered up on it. Now you're already in the back with that wave, able to clear it or drop the ravenous spirit forward. And you don't yeah. have to be stacked in that melee nazebo we all play in quick match. Yeah, pretty much. I, they're they're having him sort of played out, and I've thought to myself, wow, soul harvest is really bad here, just because. If I walk up to try to soul harvest the wave, I'm gonna get beat up. But um, that's another thing that you kind of have to judge on if you think that you're never going to be able to walk up to the wave because they are really high threat, then you might want to just take either, usually it's fighter colony if you aren't taking this talent. But the talent's really strong. The Even if you're getting four procs, Getting 28% is still really strong. If you get the five procs, and then you can get a fight started, It it's one of the strongest 16 spikes you can get. Be a surprising amount of power, too, to anybody who's come to expect the amount of damage you deal, then combo that at 20, if that is our mm -hmm. goal, and we've completed it that far. A uh, Ring of Poison, though. It's not as useful just because we're using Zombie Wall in so many different ways for zoning and other features. Yeah, and even if you use um, spec into zombie wall, there aren't any talents that make the zombies tankier. So if they kill the wall, it's it's just a small AoE, and it's not going to ignite you any value. Interesting. Oh, that's, that's an interesting... I mean, they last one second longer, but yeah, the health doesn't go up, which means anybody who doesn't panic, which these players are not going to is just going to get out of their lickety split and ruin any sort of damage deal. Mm -hmm. I love that zombie wall straight into the drop of the ravenous spirit zoning out the rest of the team <laughs> on the other side. Yeah. So right now you are at 254 <laughs> stacks. Okay. Watching you go, you were dedicated to this double so quite a bit but there were definitely a lot of visitors in the area was it uh, and, and here I, you're waiting for the team to get to camp a very nice thing to do uh, yep. to increase that that push you're gonna have what got you this high number so easily it didn't look like you were working hard for it there were a few times where my team saved midway for me so i doubled up top um as in you know midway meets first but um if I see everyone rotate out, I may stay top, fast clear it, and then my team may uh, let them clear mid and then freeze it. That happened a few times, but even still, it most of my team was playing bot half of the map, and I, I was solo playing top half of the map. So, um, or they were playing like bottom half of mid. So I, I was pretty much on my own. I, I just uh, basically just double soak. You know, pretty normal to the Spider Queen. And that communication with team allowing you to actually take advantage of things. And now I'm really seeing that with the Soul Harvest, with the getting this many stacks by the end. Mm -hmm. So you got the, the Vile Infection now. Has your, has your play style changed any? Are you trying to spread more poison around or still basically playing the same style just with more damage behind it? Um... I think you have to play close to the same. You still have to play pretty safe. You play a little bit more aggressively, but it's still poison damage. It's something that another thing when I started learning Musebo, I had to adjust to. I thought that, you know, oh, 20, I insta win. Let me just go destroy the enemy team. Sure. And then I started realizing that, you know, even though my, I do have overall higher damage than pretty much anyone else, I'm still somewhat slow at dealing that damage and I still have the same abilities that aren't the best at applying it so like toads are a little slow on um, the, the jar spiders is kind of a small AOE so I mean we, we just rolled them here at the end but I think that in an even scenario you still kind of have to play your, your slow nazebo but that makes sense because of the power spikes you discussed so it it is a ramping effect. You got that thing of the deep at one, which is giving you spell power, and you reach that hundred stacks very, very quickly. Uh, is mm -hmm. for anyone at home who wants to kind of pull this exact build off, is there a 
time or level you associate with being done with Thing of the Deep in order to feel good about it? Thing of the Deep is more for the range. The spell power is just an added bonus. I wouldn't worry too much about finishing Thing of the Deep. You do want to make sure you get to your 175 for your 20. I think that this build is actually much better in solo queue than all the other builds, just because with E on 7, you get to solo wave clear without using wall, which is a huge benefit. So you just step to the side of the wave through your E, and then you have much better wave clear that way. And that's how you're going to be able to keep forcing them to double soak with you. If you have the worst wave clear, they're going to dictate whether you're double soaking or you're fighting. Interesting. So does that mean Dead Rush is awful? No. Dead Rush will give you better wave clear if you are allowed to cast Debbie on the wave. So if I had like an Uther babysitter, I might have went Dead Rush, but I'm by myself. So I'm just going to go E and not save my W for myself. Because it's a appeal and something that you can use to escape mm -hmm. and get out with. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. Is there ever a time where despite getting all the stacks, you would go with another 20? No, which makes me really sad. I think Ravenous upgrade's really cool, but it there's really no chance of me ever taking anything but Vile Infection if I'm finished. I'd say even if you're at like 140 to 150, depending on game state, you could still just take Vile and just wait it out. Just have it be your level 20 what power spike. What would make Annihilating Spirit good for you? If they balanced it. I don't think there is a way. No. I, it, <laughs> if if they did that, people would just pick Nazebo and not sack him and then just play for 20 for that. He Honestly, I think that his pre-20 is underrated and his post-20 is slightly overrated. So he's a, he's a lot stronger pre-20 than people give him credit for, but his post-20, it, it is good, but it is a little slow. But you're still the highest damage in the game, so... You know, usually you're the highest damage in the game to where people still need to try to target you in your 7,000 health pool, but... Sure. Is <laughs> Can can we expect more Nazebo into the future, or is this sort of a, a sneaky pick and one and done? Yeah, I, I think Nazebo's good. Um, we'll most likely pick him more. I don't think there's really too much that he hard counters. He, he kind of soft counters Joe because... You know, her, her trait only lasts for so long, and then she walks in a straight line into the wave, so you can W her while she's walking to DW the wave. There's other cool interactions with them. You know, I, at first, I, when I started on this team, I thought Nazebo wasn't that good, but after playing him more, I, I think we will probably end up picking him more. He is pretty good. I'd imagine if we beat up other teams, they might start picking him too. Not to uh, get you guys to give away your strategies or anything, but... Are there other maps that you feel Nazebo can still get this level of stacks on? Probably Volskaya, but I don't think it's the number of stacks that matter. So just because I got 273 stacks and then I have 1600 health off of that, that is a benefit that we got out of it. It's more the fact that Nazebo can fill that double soaking role. He's not he's not the best at it by no means. He he's really not that fast of wave clear. But more so it's that inevitability of if the game goes 20, we're going to have 20 in Zebo, so you guys have to make a move. And I, I think that's a pretty big factor. That makes perfect sense. Awesome hearing advice on Nazebo. Uh, thank you for picking him, and good luck in the rest of the CCL. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Everyone cheer for Wild Heart Esports and Unaverted here. Like and subscribe here at Heroes Heart for more learn-to-play content for Heroes of the Storm. Don't forget to ring that bell as well, and we'll see you next week.